Good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, today's uh, lecture uh, hosted by Columbia University Weatherhead East Asian Institute and the China Center for Social Policy. My name is Qing Gao. Uh, I'm the director of the China Center for Social Policy, a faculty affiliate of the Weatherhead East Asian Institute and a professor at the School of Social Work at Columbia University. Welcome. Um, we are so happy to host this year's lecture series on the topic of urbanization, well-being, and public policy. So this lecture today is our first lecture in this semester, the spring of 2023. We have two more lectures coming up later in the semester. Uh, actually, three, three coming up, uh, and you are all invited to join us. So today, it's my great honor and pleasure to um, have uh, Professor Alfred Wu, uh, Chinese name Wu Muluan, to join us to be the main speaker. Professor Wu is associate professor in the Li Guangyao School of Public Policy at National University of Singapore. His PhD is from City University of Hong Kong, where he was the recipient of the German Academic Ex Exchange Service Scholarship and also an Outstanding Academic Performance Award for research degree students. Professor Wu previously uh, held multiple positions at other higher education institutions, but he was also a senior journalist in mainland China from 2000 to 2007 and received multiple awards and honors for outstanding journalism. Um, Professor Wu and I got connected because of our shared research interests in uh, public policy, um, central local fiscal relations, um, and social protection in China and comparatively across different countries and regions. So today, Professor Wu will share with us some new research on public attitudes toward social spending, a comparative case between Hong Kong and Singapore. Um, Professor Wu will speak for about 40 to 45 minutes, uh, after which we will turn to a question and answer session. So if you have any questions, please feel free to enter it in the Q&A box, and we will turn to your questions later on. Uh, I also want to mention that Professor Wu's lecture will be recorded uh, and posted later on YouTube channel, but uh, we will not record the Q&A session. So uh, welcome, Professor Wu. I turn it over to you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Professor Gao. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Um, then, yeah, you can you can um, see my slides, right? Okay. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, thank you a lot, uh, Professor Gao. Uh, Professor Gao is an um, uh, authority in, 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 in social welfare um, in China. I, uh, I, I benefited a lot from reading your uh, papers and books. Um, thank you so much for, for, for inviting me to talk. Um, th this project actually is uh, not uh, very much new. <laughs> Um, it, it already lasts for 10 years. Uh, time flies. When we started this project, it was, um, you know, uh, uh, 20, 20, uh, 2013, but now it already reached 2023. Uh, then I moved from Hong Kong to Singapore. Uh, then I, I do have a lot of observation, a lot of, uh, you know, comparative perspectives uh, between Hong Kong and Singapore. Then I find that uh, in Hong Kong, at some point, uh, the public opinion about um, social welfare uh, are very divided. Uh, but, but to some extent, uh, they are united around some uh, topics, around some uh, values. But here in Singapore, uh, on the surface, it's very harmonious. Uh, people don't say that we disagree with each other. But when we actually do our survey, when we do our face-to-face uh, -face, face -face interaction with people about how government spend money um, on different uh, sections of the, of the society, then people are very much divided. So uh, then it make me uh, in a difficult position. I'm not quite sure at least it's divided but united or it's, uh, it's united but divided. Anyway, uh, I also uh, need to apologize because of uh, Singapore part, it's lagging behind, although we got the funding from government. 
Uh, but because of COVID, uh, we got the money uh, in late 2019. Then everyone know that in 2020, it was impossible to have any project uh, carrying out, particularly face-to-face. -face. Then we implemented the project in uh, mid-2022. So now we are still processing the data. Um, then hope we will have another chance to share about Singapore. So here is an outline of tonight's uh, it's a morning's uh, uh, lecture. Um, I will talk more about my two uh, papers. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we already published around six to seven papers on uh, this topic. Then I will also discuss something about the competition between uh, the East and the West. We do have uh, a number of uh, different values and also particularly in Hong Kong and Singapore. So I, I, I try to um, see myself as a public finance people. So uh, my research is all about money. Uh, then uh, in our typical uh, public finance textbook, we only talk about uh, expenditure and income. Uh, we, we, we talk about objective evaluation public finance. So we only use uh, objective data, data generated by government. But we are, we are really ignoring the subjective evaluation of public finance. Uh, it means that even government spend a lot of money, uh, people may not be happy. So if you look into Hong Kong's example, uh, in one year, if you look into public finance uh, textbook, uh, people will get shocked by Hong Kong SAR government send out 6,000 Hong Kong dollars to everybody. Uh, if you are public finance experts, you definitely will say that this is something Hong Kong government should not do that uh, because of who rich people will get 6,000, uh, Li Ka Sing uh, get 6,000, then poor people also get the same. And if you look into all kinds of textbook uh, analysis, they will say this is wrong, but Hong Kong government do that. And also more importantly, in recent years, Hong Kong government repeated the behavior. Uh, then if you look into opinion survey, uh, Hong Kong people are actually really supportive of these uh, so-called uh, so -called candy uh, for everybody, not say for just for poor or just for rich. So I would say that the, there is a big room for uh, studying the subjective evaluation of public finance. So this is a, a brief summary of the publication uh, we, we did in the past. Um, Professor Tokiri was my mentor, so I, I always uh, credit my research in Hong Kong to his uh, uh, you know, uh, encouragement. Then we uh, published a number of papers. In, in the meantime, we also have some paper we try to use a public attitude as an independent variable. Um, but at the back of our research, we try to explain why public attitude are different. So we, we try to um, explore the foundation of uh, public attitudes on social welfare. Um, this is something uh, as a social scientist, everyone will ask, a fundamental question, uh, are people essentially selfish? Uh, then you will ask uh, whether self-interest assumption uh, is valid or social value assumption is valid. Uh, here, the difference uh, look like this. Uh, many people have self-interest. Then many people try to pursue uh, self-interest by, uh, for example, uh, asking government to spend more money on some sectors. For example, I have young children, then I want government to spend more on education. But in the meantime, you could see that in many societies, uh, social values matter a lot. Maybe some people come from very, uh, rich family, but they also still promote the policy for poor people. So uh, the, in the case of Hong Kong in 2014, they had a, a Occupy Central movement. Then in, in the end, a lot of researchers find that many rich people, um, the family background are so good. You know, they, 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 they went through all international school education, but they are very much um, supporting all kinds of policy uh, policy not actually really in the end benefit themselves. So if you, if you look into these kind of uh, pattern, you will actually uh, 
uh, try to understand that the social value really matter a lot. Uh, people think in a certain way. So here uh, we have some debate about cell interest assumption and the social values assumption. So this is uh, the first project. The first project was based in uh, 2013 data, now almost 10 years ago. So our study tried to investigate public attitude to the uh, income distribution in Hong Kong. We argue that it's a global phenomenon because we look into um, different countries' public opinion. Uh, very, very much uh, wide divided uh, among people about how to actually spend public money. Then in some countries, for example, like UK, public support for welfare uh, redistribution actually has declined over time. If you look into uh, longer term uh, data analysis, but we find that they really support certain type of uh, income redistribution, uh, such as education spending. Uh, if you say that, uh, please, uh, please let government actually spend more money on uh, helping poor people, uh, some people will disagree. Later on, I will let you know that it's the case in Hong Kong. Although lots of people uh, feel very much like um, empathy toward uh, poor people, but in reality, they are going against uh, spending on poor people. So here I may actually do a small, like, uh, you know, like a quiz. I'm not quite sure whether who, who would like to ask, uh, but th these uh, actually uh, picture would be very, very much like uh, familiar to many people in mainland China. Uh, but it depends on generation. Uh, here, I, I put one uh, called the car for older people. So all uh, movie stars, they are now older than 65 years old. All of them. Uh, then many people argue that the Hong Kong's movies are no longer actually uh, you know, uh, uh, popular around the world. The reason is very simple. All of the movie stars are very old. Uh, the, both of them, uh, the, the movie star uh, on his screen, they got uh, the car for older people. This, uh, this car actually is very useful. Uh, uh, everyone, if you travel in Hong Kong, you will find that the uh, transportation cost will be very high. But if you are older people, uh, you, will, you, you will have a very, very um, you know, affordable uh, transport transportation uh, options uh, because you are old. So let, let's look at uh, government scheme. Uh, Hong Kong's background is very unique. Um, it's a very, very old society. Um, uh, number two in Asia. Uh, number one is Japan. Number two actually uh, is Hong Kong, very old. But Hong Kong also has very substantial income inequality. If you look into uh, UNDP report, among 32 very high human development, countries and regions, Hong Kong was the rank number one in terms of uh, income inequality. So you can imagine that uh, even some people are very poor, uh, rich, but many people will demand that uh, we need to do something to address income inequality. So they place pressure on government to have some action. But in the meantime, if you look into uh, a lot of government spending, if government is very poor, then I don't think they have any base to place pressure on government. Because government is poor, then we only can make cake bigger. But in Hong Kong situation, yeah, it's, uh, it's very different. They always have huge uh, budget surplus every year, uh, including some year, like uh, in very, very bad year, like early, early year of COVID. Uh, but now, of course, they, they record deficit. Uh, but next year, I would say that Hong Kong may actually, again, they have very huge budget surplus. Here, I want to uh, offer you some very much brief idea about how rich Hong Kong government is. Uh, if you look into uh, World Economic Outlook database, they, they did not update uh, further uh, when I checked. They only update until uh, 2018. Uh, if you look into uh, a number of countries listed in this database, uh, Hong Kong, uh, Norway are very good. But if you look into Norway, Norway have uh, lots of natural resources. Hong Kong has none. Uh, 
they they will understand that the, how good Hong Kong government actually has the revenue every year. So uh, in terms of uh, fiscal revenue per capita, Hong Kong maybe is the one of the best in the world. Then uh, we have some research question. Um, to what extent the people of Hong Kong really support the government intervention? Uh, why uh, I need to ask this question, uh, the reason is simple, uh, because of Hong Kong is used to be viewed as a region really promote uh, so-called uh, passive government or like a lazy fair economy. So people usually will say that the Hong Kong SA government will not actually uh, want to intervene. But here is a uh, to what extent do people of Hong Kong support government in the support or opposition for lease? Uh, we, we argue that we, we do have some contribution uh, because so in the past, uh, the back of studies are based on cross-country evidence. Uh, here, we only actually do one uh, content. Then uh, we, we argue that um, Hong Kong is an interesting example. Um, Hong Kong share very similar uh, demographic characters with most of the uh, developed economies like uh, Singapore, uh, aging, then uh, a lot of demands on government uh, intervention, uh, particularly on uh, uh, aging-related uh, aging uh, social welfare. Then uh, uh, Hong Kong's uh, uh, example is a little bit uh, unique because of Hong Kong's fiscal health is good against a context of fiscal austerity uh, in, in many, in many countries, particularly in Europe. Then we argue that the, uh, the back of uh, study were based on uh, cross-country uh, evidence. Then they, they use country uh, level data, but we are actually trying to look into micro foundation of public uh, opinions on uh, redistribution. It means that we use very much micro uh, based survey data uh, to tackle the issue. I would say that these do have some uh, benefit methodologically. And finally, uh, it, it is our uh, understanding Hong Kong is not some uh, economy actually who, uh, we could actually call it very much like an economy you could see the future. Hong Kong after all is um, very much a uh, transitional economy. The, the, the reason is very simple. Hong Kong uh, was under British uh, for a while, and then uh, particularly administration uh, was very much copied from uh, UK, uh, but later on in 1997, uh, they had a, uh, this agreement then uh, transfer back to China. Uh, here, the, a lot of argument, uh, a lot of uh, different philosophy about how Hong Kong uh, government should be long and also um, a different understanding of Hong Kong's economy. So I would say that Hong Kong is uh, very much in transition. Uh, now, we, we, we have different arguments uh, in Hong Kong context, so whether Hong Kong is a, a lazy fair economy, uh, whether Hong Kong uh, government is uh, very passive. Uh, many people will argue um, from different directions. Some people will say the Hong Kong government is a very much uh, lazy fair economy because of government uh, seldom intervene in economy. But in the meantime, many people have a counter argument. Reason is very simple. Hong Kong government spend back all money on, uh, on particularly on social fair, welfare and also other items. Then in recent year, interaction between the government policy and the popular demand has intensified. Um, in the 1980s, it was not uh, the case. Uh, particularly after uh, 2000, Hong Kong people started to actually have a lot of argument about how government uh, could spend the money, then they would argue about the direction of uh, Hong Kong. So uh, some policy uh, low out by government, then uh, public uh, backlash was too strong, then government stopped the scheme. Uh, even uh, some scheme associated with the public finance. Hong Kong government say that we want to spend money on uh, green economy, then they have different items. But in the end, many people find that the lease is not actually uh, Hong Kong style, uh, people don't like it. 
then they, they, they have very, very strong uh, backlash, then government stop doing that. Uh, I would say that the, it's good, also, also it's bad, because of uh, a lot of uh, disputes in, in every day's uh, uh, public administration. Then here, uh, I would say that it's overall uh, theories for explaining public attitude of a uh, government intervention. Uh, number one is a uh, self uh, interest uh, assumption. Self interest assumption emphasizes the impact of actual or perceived uh, vulnerability on public support for uh, for government intervention. Then social values have, uh, assumption actually argue that the attitude toward a government intervention are not formed by one's own situation, but instead by values and the ideologies headed by people. Means the first one is very much individual, second one is collective. So collective means that many people think in this way, then you cannot actually break through that. You will actually follow the same pattern. Then you will actually be very much uh, angry about something, or you will be happy about something. Although uh, something may not benefit you, but you were actually really uh, pursuing for that. So here is a common argument. For example, like uh, uh, unemployed people are more likely to have positive attitude toward government intervention because they want government to actually help them uh, to survive. Uh, low income people also are inclined to support government intervention because of who they cannot actually rely on themselves. And also, uh, in the meantime, social class also matter a lot. Later on, I will share with you um, perceived social class also matter quite a lot. But in the meantime, in this line of research, uh, many people argue that in many societies, particularly young people, they have uh, much strong opinions about something. So social values and uh, ideologies really matter. They could, impact the demand for uh, government inter intervention. So here we have one very important item is uh, we ask people, uh, what do you think about poverty? Then poverty is a personal thing or is a structural issue. You know, uh, I will share with you, if you think it's a personal thing because of poor parenting, because of you do not work hard, you are lazy, then it's no reason to let government to help you because you are lazy, then you deserve some punishment. But in the meantime, lots of people in Hong Kong, they say that, no, this is something associated with the social injustice. Social injustice means that some, some people are suffering, not because of the individual reason, but because of structural reasons. So then they will actually praise government to do more. Here uh, we have uh, uh, three waves of data. Later, I will share with you. This is data in 2013. Before I left Hong Kong, I did one in 2017. Oh, it's random sampling. Uh, if you want to know more about detail, you can read my book, uh, read my, my article. Uh, here we use uh, dependent variable uh, to, to see how much people will support government to do some intervention to reduce inequality. So here the, the uh, independent variable rate, so the government reduce the income difference between rich and poor, then perhaps by raising the taxes of wealthy families or by giving income assistance to the poor. Uh, here we, we try to offer some conditions, let people know that if we want to reduce income, uh, inequality uh, through like uh, taxation, the cost will be rich people maybe need to pay more tax. Then all we do other round of, uh, other type of uh, public finance exercise. So here uh, you could see that uh, we include a number of uh, questions about public attitude of uh, government spending. Uh, we have a number of areas. This is very uh, very much context specific. Uh, we know that the Hong Kong people are concerned about something. So we ask something about welfare, assistance to poor. Then we particularly ask comprehensive social security schemes. This is something actually a uh, lot of social welfare scholars are quite uh, interested in. And also people are concerned about it. It's called CSSA. Um, 
in in maybe in the 90, 90s, this scheme actually traveled to China. Then uh, China started to have debout scheme to some extent. Uh, some scholars argue that the uh, Shanghai's uh, debout scheme was um, very much uh, copying from Hong Kong's CSA. But uh, CSA's uh, you know uh, debate is very strong in Hong Kong. Not everyone like CSA. Then we include some independent variables. Independent variables include the self interest uh, uh, assumption. Uh, we have for perceived vulnerability to a worsening financial situation. Then we ask them employment status. Uh, then here, a very important thing is uh, we ask about self rated social class. So sometimes uh, we do have a fluctuation in terms of doing this kind of research. The reason is very simple. Some people may actually belong to middle class. They will, so they will say that, oh, sorry, I belong to lower middle class. But definitely um, based on income, they may actually be typical middle class. But in some country, I, I, I realize that particularly in the United States, uh, many people uh, may be actually um, in lower middle class, but they will say that they, they, are, they are middle class. So some sort of, you know, this is very subjective evaluation. So we, we do have a limitation in terms of this kind of study. Um, in terms of social value, the most important uh, question in the questionnaire is, uh, we ask them uh, what caused poverty? Uh, then we ask them whether it's bad luck, laziness, or lack of willpower, injustice, or modern development. Modern development means that uh, at the very beginning, you are just factory workers, but when um, you know, social de uh, development happen, you, you lose your jobs. So you, you become poor, but that's a natural thing. Uh, nothing uh, about government, nothing about the problem or the society. But the, the third one, injustice in society is much uh, stronger in terms of uh, policy implication. Uh, here, I, I try to uh, offer you very uh, simple uh, statistics. You could see that uh, Hong Kong uh, really like uh, public housing. Uh, you could imagine that because of <laughs> you, if you travel to Hong Kong, you know uh, the how small <laughs> hotel room actually look like. And, and also when, uh, when I stay in Hong Kong, I sell them in my friends to my, <laughs> to my home. In Singapore, I could do because of in Singapore, I could stay in an apartment bigger than uh, 100 square meters. But uh, in Hong Kong, if you are a professor, <laughs> you also could not actually have an apartment bigger than 100 square meters. So everyone lives in tiny, uh, tiny space. Then many people actually um, uh, don't like CSA. You could see that the, here, I, I, I could uh, look into more spending. You can see. Look, back all them actually uh, record uh, more than 60%, but here uh, in terms of more spending on CSA, only record 29%, very low. Uh, if you look into other uh, areas. Uh, the, the very uh, preliminary analysis uh, suggests that 60% uh, of respondents agree that the Hong Kong SAR government should reduce income. Uh, difference between the rich and the poor, uh, only actually 14% oppose that. So here I will go through the uh, statistics very, very quickly. I don't want to get into de detail. Uh, the most important thing is here, uh, how many people think uh, poverty um, because of uh, injustice, how many people think about uh, poverty because of social development, you can see. Uh, not so many people talk about bad luck, but, but anyway, a lot of people still think, uh, one third of them still think uh, many people are lazy, then they deserve, then they, 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 they have a uh, problem in terms of uh, the revenue. Uh, here we do some uh, analysis. I will actually uh, go very quickly. Uh, you can see uh, in all uh, models, uh, we, we could see that the social injustice uh, matter a lot. If you think poverty, uh, the major cause of poverty is about injustice, then you will be uh, 
highly support a support of um, uh, some social welfare program. You could see that uh, in our study, uh, both self interest and social values assumption uh, matter. Uh, we could not find that which one is much uh, salient, but in the meantime, we will say that both work. Uh, if you ask me more uh, deeply based on my face-to-face uh, -face interview, uh, social value may be uh, matter more in Hong Kong's context, but we do not have uh, like data to support that. Um, at the very beginning, uh, a lot of people um, are thinking that um, Hong Kong may be actually uh, expand its welfare system uh, because of uh, Hong Kong return to uh, China in 1997, uh, economy should be okay. Uh, but of course, uh, Hong Kong is not always with good luck. Uh, particularly in 1997, uh, financial crisis led a lot of problem uh, associated with uh, Hong Kong's public finance, also Hong Kong government's uh, performance. So um, people are very divided uh, on social policy issues. Then, uh, some people demand for a greater uh, government intervention uh, because Hong Kong has no uh, retirement scheme until um, early 2000. So some some generation when they are getting old, they have uh, you know nowhere to get the money. Um, then later on, I will share with you um, many people blame uh, new immigrants to eat up uh, Hong Kong financial resources, but in reality. The bulk of poor people in Hong Kong are older people. Uh, Hong Kong now almost record 1.4 million uh, poor people. I'm not quite sure whether it already been uh, expanded, but you, you look into Hong Kong's uh, population is about 7 million. So the situation there is not very much rosy. Uh, then you could see that uh, uh, very much uh, based on other research, uh, Hong Kong's uh, uh, social expenditure as a share of GDP uh, lag 40 years behind the average of OECD. So every year you could see that the, uh, the red one actually uh, here in this, uh, uh, here, red one is about reserve. Reserve increase. Um, but uh, every year when the uh, financial secretary announced a uh, budget speech, a lot of people uh, go to stay and uh, protest. Um, I, I don't think this year it will be less because of um, all the time uh, different people have different demand, then they think government is not doing good. Uh, but in the meantime, they get a lot of money. Uh, for example, like uh, I just shared with you, uh, in one year they offer everybody uh, 6,000 Hong Kong dollar. But now uh, in the past two years, they offer more. Uh, including one year, they, they offer everybody almost uh, 10K Hong Kong dollar. So um, this uh, study actually have some policy implication. Uh, we could see in Hong Kong's a very typical called residual uh, welfare model. Many people argue that Hong Kong actually belong to liberal welfare uh, type of regime. But in the meantime, the demand for increased state intervention has grown dramatically. Uh, I don't know uh, whether now it's even stronger because of who I did a survey in 2017, now almost um, eight, um, almost five or six years. I don't know uh, because a lot of uh, disruptions uh, happening in Hong Kong in the past few years. Then uh, the complication of uh, interaction between the government policy and the popular demand are uh, increasingly present in Hong Kong's context. Then I have a second uh, project I will go through that very quickly. It's about age. We try to see whether uh, age can play a role in affecting public attitude to the uh, government intervention. Uh, we find that in many contexts, particularly in the US and also UK, uh, older people tend to go against uh, spending on education, uh, laying, uh, going against uh, to all kinds of spending, not actually really associated with uh, older people's needs. But in Hong Kong, very funny uh, result is um, young people support welfare programs. 
I, I, I could explain that because of social value. They think poverty due to social uh, injustice. So young people are much more informed and also maybe kinder, I'm not quite sure. So to some extent, they support social welfare, but in the meantime, a lot of older people really go against uh, welfare program. But in the meantime, they also support spending more on education. I guess uh, some sort of uh, intergenerational uh, solidarity happen here. Uh, they, they want the um, you know, offspring to be benefiting from government spend more money on education. I, I guess this is a reason. But they, 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 they rely on some themselves. So when you go to Hong Kong, you will observe that many old people drive, uh, uh, you know, um, all kind of you know uh, old style uh, taxi <laughs> car. Uh, many people ask me why uh, when you go to Hong Kong, uh, so many Hong Kong uh, uh, they are old, uh, they are they look uh, unhealthy, but they still actually um, you know engage in like a taxi industry. Uh, one reason is uh, they, 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 they believe that they need to rely on themselves. But a younger generation, when I was uh, asking them, uh, particularly during the classroom, many of them will argue that we need to have more social welfare, particularly uh, to help uh, poor people. So here we have uh, some surveys in 2007 and 2017. Maybe I will actually just use uh, one or two minutes to go through that uh, because steel is very uh, important. Uh, we we had a 2007. 2007 was done by Wu Xiaogan, and then 2013 done by me and uh, Professor Chao Kili, and 2017 by myself. Um, all are random survey. Uh, 2007 um, uh, is a, a very much uh, face to face, so you could see that uh, when people ask. Uh, uh, respond to question, many of them just say that all oh, half and half, because I guess it's a, it's a different uh, type of uh, technique. When people uh, have face-to-face -face reaction, they will actually tend to be uh, a little bit timid. But when people just uh, uh, get a phone call, they will be more outspoken. So um, in our survey, uh, the, the something in between, half and a half will be, will be less, but in 2007 will be more. So I just want to share with you some key findings. You could see that when we ask them, whether we agree that achievement come from luck, uh, you could see that uh, uh, <laughs> um, a lot of people disagree. Um, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the level of disagree actually is very, very high. Uh, people still think uh, we need to grab on opportunities. We need to work hard. So, uh, but in the meantime, they will argue that, um, you know, uh, social inequality uh, are not actually due to different gifts or ability. Uh, you could see that uh, uh, many of them support this argument. They, they will say that, uh, um, you know, it, it's not about uh, uh, your own talents or ability um, because of social inequality caused by uh, the, the back of people who are rich, then who are in power. Here is it, the, the question we ask about whether social inequality due to manipulation of small group of people in power. Uh, many of them agree with that. Also, um, I, 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 I guess um, this also is due to some sort of you know, argument in Hong Kong. Uh, many people argue that uh, uh, property tycoon uh, control the society. Then uh, if you have a housing, you naturally can move to upper class. But if you don't have housing, you will actually stay in uh, lower class. So they argue that the, to some extent, uh, the whole society is controlled by a small group of people, particularly people who are close to uh, property sector. So here it's very clear. They say that the uh, social inequality due to a structural factor, then we cannot actually address by individual efforts. 
then government have the uh, moral responsibility to reduce social inequality. And a very high percentage of uh, people support that we need to actually increase our tax, particular tax on rich people to reduce income inequality. And this is a very uh, funny result because at the very beginning, uh, public finance bureau in Hong Kong usually say that we don't have a consensus on uh, tax rich people. Uh, but when our result release, we, we, we did one press conference, a uh, very high percentage of people agree with uh, this item. So the government actually uh, also responded that uh, they did not actually understand how much um, sentiment, particularly about uh, income inequality. Uh, I would say that in 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 the recent years, a lot of people still talk about this issue. Uh, try to actually push government to have more tax on rich people. But overall, if you look into public finance, uh, Hong Kong government and tax rich people uh, very very light, even compared with Singapore. Uh, here, I don't want to go through because here I divided the Hong Kong people into four generations, uh, some quite young, some in between, uh, some older than uh, 1965. Uh, Hong Kong um, generational gap is uh, very, very uh, visible. Uh, it depends on the uh, life experience and also, uh, you know, the, the level of economic development in Hong Kong. So uh, finally, I, I would like to uh, let you know that um, uh, a lot of people are quite concerned about social inequality, particularly young people tend to be very much uh, pessimistic. Uh, that's also uh, the reason why uh, in Hong Kong, uh, there were a lot of social movement in the past. We, we had one paper explaining what happened at the grassroots level uh, using the same set of data. Then uh, many people believe that the social inequality is due to manipulation of a small group of people in power. Uh, here, I want to spend one minute of, about uh, Singapore's project. Singapore project is funded by government as well. Um, we, in general, we want to ask whether they understand um, how much money governments spend on social welfare. Uh, because um, uh, Singapore is uh, different, um, usually government uh, have a lot of money in different areas, um, but the citizens are not uh, very much uh, participating in discussing something with the government. They look like uh, they have a relationship like uh, children and, and parents. So basically parents do, do good, all good things, then children just accept. But in recent years, young people start to understand uh, more about government policy. Then we try to, try to understand the level of public support on different um, social spending items. Then we also ask them to make a decision uh, what kind of social spending you want. So here we uh, uh, just show you some very brief uh, statistic about Hong Kong and uh, Singapore. Uh, Singapore is very old now. And also um, Singapore is aging uh, rapidly very, very fast. At the very beginning, uh, the median age uh, is okay. I mean, uh, quite close to average or ASEAN country. But now Singapore actually is a, uh, it, it, it's very much uh, in, in a trouble. Uh, similar to Hong Kong, uh, very old. Then we are worried about uh, fertility. We are all worried about uh, whether young people would like to uh, give birth. So now a lot of debate, uh, particularly like uh, in, uh, early this week, Singapore released the annual uh, budget speech, uh, the, the finance secretary. Then we find that uh, a lot of policies are associated with families and also try to encourage families to have more babies. Uh, but the problem is that uh, aging is not reversible. I mean, in many countries. Then, Singaporeans also think the government should handle rich and poor gap. Uh, this is actually from a local uh, opinion survey. Uh, you could see that uh, uh, people are not very happy. Um, so a little bit divided. You can see that many people will think Singapore government is not handling 
uh, rich and poor gap uh, quite well. Uh, you can see, uh, particularly people who are uh, poor, they, they are suffering more, they will actually really have more, uh, you know, um, that kind of request for government to do better in terms of closing rich and poor gap. So here is a very different from Hong Kong uh, uh, style. Hong Kong style, we did opinion survey, we did uh, uh, opinion survey through phone. Here we did a, uh, one project, um, actually at that time, uh, we worked with the World Value Survey. I was the uh, chief investigator. Uh, we did have data, but now we are more uh, interested in very, very small uh, sample size, small N, only 72 citizens. Then we had two days. Uh, every day we have workshop, every day we have a questionnaire, every day we have debate. So uh, we, 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 we try to have some social impact. So we publish uh, opinion piece first. Uh, but here I just want to show you one example. We ask them if government uh, going to offer you uh, additional 10,000 Singapore dollar to address aging related needs, then uh, what kind of uh, areas you want to spend? You could see that the healthcare much more. Uh, here, the, 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 the survey is good uh, compared with others, like uh, the, the survey I did in Hong Kong. Because of the survey I did in Hong Kong, I, when we ask them, you want to come to spend uh, more on something, less on something, we don't offer them a number. But here we offer them a number. So they need to make a choice. So it's a, the, the total amount is 10K, but now you need to divide. So here you look, they push themselves. They, they say that I want to spend more money helps. So they want government to step in to help them to reduce the burdens on health, uh, on health spending. Then in the meantime, they are very much um, care about uh, caregiving. Caregiving now is a bigger concern because of who is an aging society. So many uh, people who are uh, working adult, they don't have the capacity or you know, sometimes they are very struggle, struggle to take care of the uh, old parents. So they want that to be um, taken care of partly by government. Then they want some transfer payments to senior director. Uh, they, they want some sort of uh, easy money for seniors. They know that the seniors are not actually living in a very, very good uh, you know, condition. They want uh, people to help seniors, and they also want government to help seniors. Yeah, let, 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 let's all uh, hope I have more to share about Singapore stories in the future. Here is uh, our commentary. <laughs> we, um, uh, our school actually tried to have more policy implication uh, for the general public. So our school pushed us to publish opinion piece first. Yeah, so this piece is about um, uh, developing a uh, uh, you know uh, aging uh, friendly society. So we try to contribute a piece uh, to this debate. Yeah, that's all. Thank you so much, Professor Wu. This is uh, such a wonderful presentation connecting three different studies uh, spanning a long time period. Uh, I really appreciate your generous sharing and I learned a lot. I want to urge our audience members to please enter any questions you have for Professor Wu into the Q&A box. Um, Professor Wu, if you uh, would like to stop sharing, we yes, could have I a can. conversation. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. So I can start with some questions and uh, yeah, thank you. thoughts mm -hmm. I've been uh, having during your presentation. Uh, one very, um, one theme that stood out for me is the change uh, that we see in Hong Kong from mm. 2007 to 2017, right? I yes. know uh, you still don't have more updated data, but uh, I've been wondering what have been happening during 